Hey guys, I'm finishing my video. <laughs> I know I look crazy. I look so out of it. Other than aging. My skin being terrible and wrinkles and everything else in this rash. Um, <clears throat> the last video that I made was an hour long and YouTube was just impossible. So we have to keep it at 20 minutes. It's just so much easier. Part two of part one. <laughs> the trucker. Mm. Part one was kind of funny because he had interesting stories always told me. But part two was about my daughter wanting to see her dad. And, and she was 15. And, you know, she, she just had her dad. Everything would be better. And, and she went out there for a month. I found him. I had a dream the night before. I couldn't remember where he lived. Couldn't find him anywhere. And I finally remembered this last name. And I went, oh my God, that's his grandfather. And I looked up his number and it was there. And he drove over and told Timmy right away. The same exact day, his eldest son called him too. It was so weird. So Timmy was, wasn't on the truck. He was helping take care of his uh, aunt. So we get to talk it again. And I have this boyfriend that I've had for eight years. He's on a second tour of Iraq. And he's just like a wackadoo. And Timmy was like stability. So Kimmy went out there. She didn't stay a month. She stayed two weeks. She hated it. She had to share with her brothers and sisters. And um, so she came back home. And then Tim started calling me. And he was back in my life again. And um, this time it was going to be different. You know. And I think we spent like a month in the room. I mean I went to work every day. But I'd come back and we'd be in the room. You know. This heated romance we had that we could just couldn't stop. I got garden soil in my eye. And um, so he shows up and it was April Fool's Day and um, after, you know, a month and he came with a son and so I had a stepchild and um, um, who just failed his driving test twice. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. And um, at April Fool's, Tibby told me we should get married today. I said, are you kidding me? Our, our marriage would be a joke. And um, and he said, well, will you marry me tomorrow? And I don't know why I said yes, but I did. After all those years of running away from him, I finally decided to marry Tim. So we got married. And a year later, he pissed me off in the living room. And he said something really rude and like trucker talk stuff. I'm outside. It's one of my On my garden pot. <laughs> And so we were, um, he said something really rude to me and, um, I went upstairs and I said, leave me alone. I'm going up to my room. And he said, fine. You know, and he got mad. And I went up to my room and I turned on the TV and my flat screen was trying to chill out from this thing he said and not getting angry and all that jazz. And, um, he says to me, um, open the door, pound, pound. And I said, no, leave me alone. Give me a few minutes. Which, by the way, the therapist said if you ever get angry, you should take a few minutes out and then come back to the situation in 20 minutes. So he unlocks the door with a knife. And he comes around the bed like he's just going to, like, you know, be all rude with me. And I jump up out of the bed and I'm like, get away from me. Get out of the room. And he's like, no. And I'm like, yes. And he's like, no. And I'm like, yes. And I said, I'm in my bowl right now. I'm trying to calm down. Just get out. No, I want to talk to you. I said, I don't want to talk to you right now. I'm really mad at you for what you said. And, um, he comes at me, you know, like he's going to like hug me, touch me, grab me, whatever. He wasn't going to hit me. Um, but he was coming towards me and I leapt. I actually, I kicked him in the leg and he bent down. And when he bent down, I jumped over his head and then I jumped on his back and I went like this towards his mouth and I cut both the corners of his mouth and blocked two, two of his eyes. So that was our humble beginnings. <laughs> he had to go to work the next day with two black eyes. And this is when Tim was being a carpenter. He was building the freeways again. All was right with the world. He gets mad. He leaves. And, um, and he's supposed to go to therapy with me to find out why he can't stop making me mad. And why he can't leave me alone. And because he does that. Not now, but he used to. So anyway, um... I go to pick him up for therapy because he's staying at the construction guy's house and um, he wants me to go to the basement, which means he wanted to suck me up. 
And I said, no, get in the car. We're going to therapy. We have an appointment in like an hour and a half. And he wouldn't get in the car. So he promptly left on a truck, and I didn't hear from him for another month. In the meantime, I did divorce papers. I was so adamant about this. And so I filled them all out, had them sitting there, and um, I asked for $1,200 a month in spousal support, even though I was making two grand a week. Mm, and, um, and so, I don't know, a couple months later, Timmy um, calls me late at night, like he always did. And I answered, and I was probably high or drunk or one of the two. And he said, hey, baby, what's going on? And I was like, hey, baby, what do you want? And he was like, hey, baby, I'm in Montana, which means I'm coming to Colorado, which means come with me. So I was like, um, no. So click, I hang up the phone. And so he calls me a couple days later, you know, and he's like, I'm at the Jujip truck stop, which I had never been there. It was like this weirdo truck stop way out in like 30 minutes from here. And um, so I show up. And I'm all dressed up. And I've got, like, heels on like that, you know. And I'm being crazy. And um, I was thinking, like, I was going to tip myself with him and show myself that I could and I could do it. Oh, no sooner did I do that. I was in the sleeper birth with Tim. <laughs> God. And so he's like, go get your stuff and come with me. And, um... And um, spent some time with me on the truck. So I promptly came home, picked up my dog, walked the house, packed my bag, threw the divorce papers inside my bag in case he pissed me off again and got in my bubble. And um, I'm a bubble person. Don't get my bubble. Don't get my space when I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> and um, so we went on a 29-day journey in which I got a yeast. I had a, had a urinary tract infection. had to go to the hospital. Timmy couldn't get his truck down the road. So I had to walk there. Um... He wouldn't stop what I wanted him to. Like when I had to pee. That's why I got the urinary tract infection. Um, he would drive literally between 70 and 90 miles an hour late at night. And I would be sleeping in the sleeper berth and going, am I flying? And I would wake up and go, Tim. And he'd go, I'm slowing down. And I would, hit, I would hear the jakes. So literally my husband does 70 to 90 miles an hour down the road. That's just his normal speed. And so I start to get upset, and I'm not liking this, and, and it's getting really bad out there, and I'm thinking, this is not fun, this is not a dream. He did take me to walk, go see fireflies, which I had never seen in my life, because I grew up in the desert, and there's no fireflies there. So I, um, I was really mad. And so one day, he's loading and tarping. It was really dirty, and they shut down the facility, and he was in the open area, and he was tarping. And um, he was really dirty, and I was like, oh, God, he's going to come in here all dirty and mess up the bed again and mess up. He's a very messy truck driver. And um, I just thought, man, this is the time. So he's like, hey, baby, what are you doing? And I was like, hey, baby, check this out. And he was like, what's that? And I go, grab it. And he grabs it, and I go, you've been served. We didn't speak for, I think, 10 days before we got home. <laughs> I came home, I was very angry, because not only did I get sick, but he's driving like a freaking maniac. Oh, my hair always gets stuck in this clippy thing. It drives me crazy. And, um, he, um, he gets these divorce papers, and he was so freaking mad at me. Well, I was mad, too. I mean, he just took me on this journey, and it was horrible, and it was supposed to be this romantic trip, and it turned into a nightmare. And I don't even want to get into all the details of that. Other than him driving 80, 90 miles an hour in the middle of the night and during the day. Which would make me like, uh, mountain slopes, what have you. So, <clears throat> he brings me home. And he walks me up to this ferry stop. And he says, uh, I'm never going to see you again. And I'm thinking in my head, uh, no. Because we just keep bumping into each other all the time. And we've been together and been apart so many times, I can't even count in 29 years. And so, <laughs> when he was walking up the sidewalk, he turned around and he's like, bye, baby girl. Like, you know, guilt trip. And I'm like, going to stand my ground. So I go down and I file the papers. And I'm thinking, well, there's no kids. There's no child support. Okay, spousal support. But like, you know, I don't have to come back to court. You know, like, they're filed. They're done. I did the you know, serve thing. I did all that. I filed this paper, that paper. And, um, you know, in six months, they'll send me the decree. So I told everyone I was divorced. Well, a couple months later, <laughs> Tim called me. 
he was in Montana again or Wichita and said, hey, baby girl, what's going on? And I was like, oh, no, he wants to come in. And um, I was pissed. He was working for Western Express. I was so pissed. So, um, hey, baby girl, what's going on? And so, oh my God. But then I had another boyfriend. You know what I mean? I was just, like, turning and burning. And, uh, <laughs> So he's coming in, and I know it, and he said, um, can you do me a favor? Well, I'd always done 10 favors. I mean, if he called me and asked me for something, I always did it, you know. Even if we weren't, like, together together, we were kind of together. So as long as, you know, he wasn't sleeping with anyone else. <laughs> and Timmy didn't have any girlfriends or anything. So <coughs> he always stays alone up there. So anyway... Because Timmy, once he loves you, he only loves you. Like, he loves you. And that's all he loves for the rest of his life. So he comes in. I meet him at the truck stop. And he said, I really, really, really need you to show me my divorce papers. And I was like, well, yeah, okay. Being the smart aleck that I am. And I bring him to the house. And I said, come down to the basement with me. And we'll um, dig up the divorce papers that are in the file cabinet. So we go down there, and I open up the envelope. I had never even opened up the envelope. I open up the envelope. I find the court paper. We open it up, and it's like, why didn't you come to court? <laughs> and I'm like, we're not divorced. And he said, okay, well, will you take me down to the county building? Because I want to make damn sure we're divorced. Well, the whole time I'm not realizing that Tim's actually um, trying to get back together with me, but I didn't know that. I thought he was just trying to prove this divorce thing which in, I think in his heart, maybe he was just wanting to know if it was over. Or maybe he was just had ulterior motives. So we go down to the courthouse, and the little Mexican man said, um, the only record I have on you is a, um, divorce, uh, a marriage certificate. There is no divorce. You're still married. <laughs> so that leads to part three. Tim and Cindy are still married, even though Cindy thought she officially divorced him. And I'm a pretty thorough, accurate woman, too. And this will go in the truck, Ice Road Trucker video um, playlist on my YouTube. Oh, my God. Yeah.